We're in Flanders, which is one of the most anticipated cobbled classics of the cycling season. Now, the actual Flanders route is 267 kilometres long. Hold on. We're not doing the whole thing, are we? Ah, uh, well, uh, no. OK, so don't worry, we don't have to do the whole route, because I've devised a cunning plan that lets us take in the best cobbled sections and the hardest climbs without having to ride the distance that the pros do. And that's what's so great about Flanders and the race, is that the race starts in Antwerp and wiggles its way down to the Odenard. And then from the Odenard, it's basically just a series of loops out on itself and back again, which means you can put together a really great route without having to ride as much of the distance. But we're actually based in Brackel, which is part of the Tour de Flanders uh, route, uh, although not the most famous part. So we're going to head straight to uh, Gerardsberg, where we climb the Muir for our first stop within the first 10 k's of our ride. We do, so it's a pretty punchy start. Now you might be able to see that it is blowing a gale here in Flanders and we have been keeping a close eye on the weather which is basically going anywhere from gale force winds to torrential rain on and off throughout the day. So you know, a proper flavour of the classics. That's yeah. it, because like, at the end of the day we're in Flanders, this is the home of the hard man. It's about cold, it's about suffering and we might end up doing a bit of that today I think. Yeah, so we should probably go and find out which of us is the real hard man of Cycling Weekly. Yeah. It's not me. It's definitely not me. Should we go? Yep. Right. Let's crack on. Our ride takes in five of the most important climbs in the Tour of Flanders. We'll start with the Mur, before riding over to Odenard to take in the Eau de Quermont, the Paterberg, the Koppenberg, before finally climbing the Tyneberg. Our total route is just shy of 80 kilometers with 1,129 meters of climbing. With such brutal climbs, we're looking for bikes that give us every advantage. And the Ribble Endurance SL, the Boardman SLR 9.6 and the Canyon Endurace CF SL Disc 8.0 Aero are our rides of choice for these cobbled climbs. With their clearance for wide tyres, built-in flex zones and sporting geometry, as well as clever aerodynamic touches, each of these stunning machines is an example of cutting-edge endurance bike technology perfectly equipped to take on even the toughest Belgian roads. So, we're here, we're only, actually we're only 10 kilometers into our ride. <laughs> Feels longer. <laughs> but that is to come to this magnificent place, the Mur van Gerardsbergen, otherwise known as the wall because of its 9.3% average gradient, topping out at 19.8%. And the crazy thing about it is it does all that in 900 meters. It's staggering considering it actually only ascends 92 meters. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> so much of the Tour of Flanders is like decided on this climb. Made famous really in 2010 when Big Fabs, Fabian Cancellara, destroyed millions of Belgian hearts yeah. by dropping Tom Boonen, you know, pretty much on the, yeah. the you know, the last five turns. But by a staggering 150 metres, you can't forget that. <laughs> it's such a huge amount. Yeah, yeah. Over that short distance, that's pretty much, you know, almost like the last steep cobble section, just gone. This climb, the Mur and the Bosberg, which is very close, used to be the two finishing climbs of the Tour of Flanders. So this was actually where a lot of the races were decided. But recently they changed the course and now the two penultimate climbs are the Quermont and the Paterberg, mm. which is where we're going next. Only problem is, I think it's pretty much headwind back to where we're going. Well, see that, see that, that flag, flag up there? Yeah. At least it's not raining. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. So we've just cycled up the Quermont in the 
pouring rain, as you can see, it's <laughs> absolutely things, chucking it Things down. have changed. They, they really have. It has got pretty horrendous. Now, the Cuermont is one of the most prolific climbs in the classics, actually. So it appears in the Tour of Flanders, E3 Harlebecker, and uh, Dwarves Dorvlanderen as mm. well. But, little fun fact for you here, the, uh, the road is actually called the Quermont, not the hill. The hill we're on is the Kloisberg Hill. Right, mm. okay. Well, that's a good fun fact, that is. Yeah. But, interestingly enough, this is a great place to come and watch the race because it comes up here three times for the pros. We're <laughs> struggling with one. <laughs> and the third time is the penultimate climb of the day. Uh, the great thing about coming to watch the race here is that the Pattenberg Pattenberg, Pattenberg. Um, yeah. is only 2k away, so you can actually go watch it there, which is the final climb of the race. Yeah. And the quarry run is 2.2 kilometers long, and it's only got an average gradient of about 4.2%, so it's not as steep as some of the others, but it ramps up to about 11%, and that comes right at the start of the parve. So just after that smooth road section, that's where it starts ramping up. But the last section, starts easing off. So as we've just done now, that's where the pros will start putting the power down, getting ready for the Paterberg. Yeah, it's quite a hard hill to climb because on the smooth pavement, you kind of rock it along yeah. really quickly and then you just hit the cobbles <laughs> and you have to try and maintain your speed. Yeah. But it's very difficult to do. It is. It's like as soon as you hit that, all your speed gets sucked out. So it's all about just applying that constant power, but trying to keep seated as much as possible. Because as soon as you get out of the saddle, all that happens is your wheel starts spinning. So you go nowhere then. Yeah. And if it's as wet as today when you ride it, try and stay in the middle of the road because it's off cambered on either side and that will just have you slipping around everywhere. Slide over. Or if you can't do that, get in the gutter. If there's a smooth section, get in it. But today, gutter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a river. It's, it's a bit of a river, a really. Go. Well, guys, we're two kilometers away from the Paterberg. Yep. I don't think we should hang around in the rain any longer. Let's get cracking on. Let's do it. That's better. Oh. So, we've made it to the top of the Paterberg. That's the final climb of the Tour of Flanders. It's only 400 meters long, and ordinarily that wouldn't be that tough, but that doesn't take into account that it gets up to 20% on the cobbles, and there's that crazy sharp right-hand bend at the bottom that you hit it, and it just takes all momentum away. So that's the last climb for the racers, but for us, we're carrying on. So the next place we're going is the Koppenberg. So come on, let's do it. Oh. So guys, we've just rolled up to the Koppenberg and 600 meters of cobbles makes this one of the toughest climbs in the classics. Thankfully, we've started to dry out a little bit <laughs> after the storm this yeah. morning, but it is still very slippy, right? It is, yeah. These 600 meters of cobbles are coated in water and the Koppenberg is famous for seeing many a pro dismount their bike and have to walk their way up it. And uh, is that going to be happening to any of us today? Have you well, looked at it? Seen? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I'm going to put myself up for walking about 10 meters just there. It maxes out at 22%. Oh. It averages 11.6%. This is absolute madness. And in fact, famously in 1987, Jesper Skibby who was the leader of the Tour of Flanders at the time, fell, slipped and fell, remained strapped into his uh, little toe straps on his bike, and then his bike was subsequently run over by the commissaire's car. car. <laughs> yeah, yes, but I think it was okay. Yeah. His bike was not. Not so much. No. No. So guys, if we can get to the, anywhere on the climb without getting run over by the car, it's a victory. We've done better than be yes, yeah. Skippy. Yeah. 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 So yeah. what I think we should do is we should ride this brute and then we'll check in at the top. Okay. okay.
that was brutal, that was... I might uh, put, because I, I nearly stopped and walked. I was <laughs> that close. The bit where it pitches up to 22%, every pedal stroke I was like, this will be the one where I get off. And I just, I just saw your little orange form going <laughs> up the hill in front of me, and I was like, if Simon can do it, I can do it. <laughs> Simon can do it, <laughs> I can do it. But you caught me and you passed me. Yes, I did. James Bracey was just steamrolling. Yeah, but it's like you just trying to find like a smooth line and there is, after a while you kind of go, there is no smooth line. You're just having to go bang, bang, it's bang and try to keep awful. some sort of power down and then think, Simon and Rupert are right behind me. <laughs> keep going, keep going. You can probably hear my breath. So like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, do we find an ambulance now? <laughs> <laughs> so how far have we been so far? We have ridden about 60 kilometers okay so about 20 to go got about 19 19 Perfect. 20 Perfect. to go so Perfect. we've got one last section that is uh Tainberg, and that is en route to home So we've made it to the final point of interest on our miniature Tour de Flanders ride. Interestingly enough, this is the favourite among sectors of Tom Boonen, the Belgian classics rider, ex-classics rider. Uh, and this is the Tyenberg, made famous for being ridiculously hard. But I did lay down the hurt, found the gutter and put it to you guys, I think. You did, yeah. yeah. You, can, you can use the gutter quite well on this climb, actually. Yeah, you can. Yeah. You can stay in it if you want to all the way. But these guys did say it's about half the distance and half as hard as the rest of them, but it just kept on going. It really did. But this section is included in a lot of the uh, early uh, classics races. So it is in the Tour of Flanders, it is in E3 Harold Becker, and is in Het Nieuwsblad. It marks our final point of interest, like you say, because we are now only 10 kilometers from yes. home. So let's do this. Let's go. So there you have it. That is Cycling Weekly's Flanders route of choice. And now, what's great about riding around Flanders is that everything is close enough together that if you want to add anything else in, it's really easy. Or, heaven forbid, if you want to do some of those climbs again, you also can. No, what? no. <laughs> 79k of our route was enough. Some of those climbs were pretty tough. I've got a newfound respect for the pros that do 200 and 67 Ks, like that is insane. Um, but if you guys at home have got any interesting routes or any advice to give, please do let us know in the comments section below. But until then, we're gonna get some beer and fritz. We'll see you next time.